something wonderful. Something wonderful. Something wonderful is happening to me right here, right now. Something wonderful. Something wonderful is happening to me right here. Vancouver Spiritual Center. It's our pleasure to welcome you on this Sunday morning and uh, we warmly welcome all people, all faiths, and all lifestyles. Unity is an inclusive uh, spiritual community and we're dedicated to learning from all of the world's wisdom traditions and let's just set an intention right now that today we find that particular aha moment that helps us to evolve into a higher state of consciousness and greater levels of happiness. So with that said, um, we always like to start with a few moments of levity while the last uh, people are busy getting checked in uh, to this online service. And uh, I came across a few uh, interesting ones. Um, it turns out, uh, you know, there's a, a switch in my house, a light switch. It doesn't seem to do anything, but every now and then I just kind of click it to see. Um, but uh, yesterday I got a call from a lady in Madagascar. She said, cut it out. <laughs> 
Uh, as well, um, yesterday I saw a I said, I, I said to myself, I think that's a clear sign. Um, also, with lockdown and corona and everything that's going on, a lot of people obviously are watching a little bit more Netflix and uh, got me thinking, we really do owe a lot to Thomas Edison. Because if you think about it, if not for him, we'd all be watching TV by candlelight. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, uh, I was uh, driving in the car and uh, going, uh, uh, I guess it was 70 miles an hour, and uh, got stopped by a cop who said, uh, do you know the speed limit is uh, 55 in these parts? And I said, uh, yes, officer, but I wasn't going to be out that long. <laughs> so uh, with that said, a little lightness of being uh, now established, let's all turn our attention to and uh, begin with our one power affirmation. All together now, <clears throat> there is only one presence and one power active in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotent. And uh, just as we kick off, we want to bring your attention to some of the things that we've got going on this week. Um, coming up in particular on Monday evenings, we continue with the Song of Love, which is an exploration of uh, the deeper aspects of the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, that is taught by... Um, uh, Will uh, and uh, Cynthia, um, Will uh, Keepen and Cynthia Bricks, and that's uh, coming up this Monday evening from 7 to 9 p.m. As well, we're continuing our morning meditations. Uh, for those of you that like to start out by establishing equanimity and uh, presence, uh, th those uh, kick off every morning, uh, Monday through Saturday, actually, not every morning, Monday through Saturday, from uh, 7 a.m. to about 7.30. Uh, our study uh, groups of A Course in Miracles continue weekly, led by Marion Dick, Margaret McLeod, and Fern Logan. And you can attend either one of those weekly sessions, uh, one at Tuesday from 1 to 3 p.m., one at Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, the Quest continues, uh, which is led by Janet Law, which uh, walks through the unity perspective on a variety of uh, the more frequently asked questions on the spiritual path. And the theme for this session, this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., is you can be healed. Every time you seek to get well, you are doing the will of God. So that's uh, this Wednesday at 7.30. And all of these uh, classes, by the way, are available on Zoom and accessible uh, through our website or through the email that probably led you here this morning. And finally, we've just noted, uh, or just announced, rather, uh, a, uh, another edition of Conscious Conversations, which will be led by Janet Law, and that will be on Wednesday, June the 10th at 7.30 p.m. And so that brings to a conclusion our announcements. And so now just take in a slow, deep breath and recenter yourself. Let go of anything that may have been bothering you or stress, anxiety, any concerns at all, just let them go with your exhalations. And then finally, take a deep breath into your heart center and let it go. Take a moment to just listen to the silence. And now, Join us as Nathan sings the new English translation of the Aramaic version of the Lord's Prayer. Feel free to sing along. Holy Spirit, creator and life of all, create a space inside us and fill it with your presence. Now prevail. Your one desire flows through us as heavenly fills our forms. Give us this day our physical and spiritual nourishment. 
All the knots of error that bind us as we also release others. Don't let appearances make us forgetful of the source, but free us to act from a highest nature. From your presence comes the glorious harmony of life. May these words be fertile ground from which our future grows. Welcome back, everyone, up to that beautiful, beautiful Aramaic version. We want to first welcome Bob Trask back, a favorite speaker here in the past at Unity, and we're so honored and pleased that you are here today with us, Bob. Bob Trask's earliest learning came from the native elders in New Mexico, who revealed to him and within him the presence of the Great Spirit. And in the following years, his quest for awareness led him to the many callings. As the wilderness guide and a medical rescue professional, businessman and more. It was only when as a sea captain struggling to save the lives inside a deadly hurricane that Bob was totally catapulted into the presence that saved his ship and changed his life. He founded ARAS in 1978 and has continued on his adventure assisting people in birthing and assisting people in moving through the countless countless journey called life in the years since bob has dedicated his life to serving those on this path of spiritual transformation and with books in four languages he is now mentor to hundreds of thousands in 13 countries and currently is the minister at the Unity Spiritual Center in Bellingham, Washington. Bob Trask, we welcome you with your meditation and your beautiful message today. Thank you in advance. Thank you, Janet. <clears throat> Can we all just close our eyes for just a moment and go inside into that quiet, beautiful place where there's nothing except the beating of your heart and the sweetness of your spirit. And as you breathe in and out, four breaths, excuse me, four counts of breathing in, four counts of holding that breath, four counts of letting it out, and four counts of relaxing. And as you breathe in, will you know that you're breathing in the grace and the spirit of the one creator of all divine universes? And as you breathe that in, know that you're breathing in my love and the love of those around you. And as you hold that for a count of four inside of you, will you feel it enriching you, going into your veins, your arteries, and throughout your whole body, renewing you? And when you breathe that out, will you breathe your own light and your own love out into us? And I'll be quiet for a moment and just let us rev just revel in that joy.
Thank you. Thank you. So today we're going to talk about the, uh, the deadly stuff in our past that comes back to haunt us. It, you know what, I, I kind of get a picture of, of a guy or a gal walking along with this enormous sack over their back and inside of that sack are all these the dead bodies of all of their experiences that they didn't like and they can't get rid of and they keep dragging them along and they keep dragging them along for their whole life. And you know, it's kind of a humorous picture, but it isn't really a humorous situation because inside of my life and inside of your life, those make a difference. Those darknesses, those memories of mistakes or losses or tragedies are affecting us today. They're affecting every part of our lives. We came here into this incarnation on purpose, with a purpose. You and I have a reason for being here. There never has been, there never will be another you. That's it. In the billions of people who have lived in the trillions of people who are yet to live, there never has been, there never will be another you. Now, there, now but with your fingerprints, your eye prints, the neuronal pattern of your brain, your personality, the crispness of your voice, never be another person who can see reality the way you see it who can know what you know. And when you were a baby, when you were a child, a little, little baby, you didn't have any identity. That identity accumulated through your experiences. And the experiences that you had didn't start off being really bad and really good and really bad and really good. For instance, as a toddler, you felt an average of 17 times an hour. That's, that's about a thousand times a week. If you look back in your, in, your, in your history, you don't see any of that being a detriment. How is it that we forgave that? let that go. At what point did we learn that to be, to fail at something made us a failure? At what point did we get that awful lesson? And is it too late to unlearn it? Because if you look in the rear view mirror of your life, and you look back behind you and you see a garden. And in the garden, there are fruits and vegetables and, and maybe some fruit trees and berries. And, and it's all really gorgeous and lovely. And if you look, you'll see there's some weeds growing up and there's some little aphids and there's a mole digging through there. And there's these little guys in there. They're gobbling the deliciousness and the treasures of what? Of your past but your past isn't past. Your past is the identity that you carry of yourself. And those little guys that are nibbling away at that are nibbling away at you, at your self-worth, at your preciousness. You cannot afford that, nor can I. You know, the thing is that all of those things back there that happened, happened for a purpose. And we, we, we resist them and we push them away and we say, oh, I wish that hadn't happened. And oh, if I could only go back and change that. I, I want to tell you how effective those things can be on us. Uh, uh, famous company, the name of which you would know if I said it, but I'm not going to say it. This is a software company and, and made computers and all that sort of thing. And they hired all of these, and this was back in the 60s, early 60s, but they hired all these guys out of college to become their account representatives, which means salesmen. And, 
and they, they had to have a college education. They had to look a certain way. They had to be able to wear the little black tie and, and, and the suit. They had, you know, they had to be morally straight and clean and honest and a good background and get high grades in college. And they had to be eloquent and all these things. So they, all these guys were like, like almost like clones they were so much alike but they got they got them all together and then they put them through their massive training program and through their massive training program they all learned how to represent the product and how to take the product to the field and how to how to get how to get people to really see the value of it and 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 to buy it and the guys made a salary but they also made uh, a commission over the top of the salary after a while the administration noticed that there was a group of people who were doing really well. They were making a lot of money. They had a lot of success as salespeople and as customers and as account representatives. They had another group that had their salary and they were doing okay, but they weren't on the level of the other people. And they said, why? How could that be? They were, we hired them all the same. They all looked the same. They all got great grades in our classes. They all came out of there and went out into the field. And some of them were really successful and some of them not so much. Why? So they did a psychological study and they found one of the main reasons was those people who were not doing well, their fathers had worked hard for a living and only made so much money. And all through their lives, their, their dads working hard only made so much money. Now these guys, if their base salary was at least that much money, it was an affront in their minds and a lack of loyalty to their dads and arrogance within them to for them to rise up and make more money than their dad had. And so that was something that they, they needed to look at. That's a pretty benevolent and easy thing in the past in the garden. That's not really one of the ugly things in the garden, but it's something that actually controlled them. Imagine then how much your mistakes and your real losses and the things that you've done that really caused damage to other people or, or pain to others, imagine how much those affect your life. I know that, I know it really well because you know, you're listening to a guy that's made a bunch of mistakes. Whew, whew, I've made mistakes, you know, as a sea captain and many of the careers that I've had that have cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. There are at least, at this point, three people who are in their graves because of mistakes that I made. So, I know what it's like to have things in the past, those vermin in the garden, nibbling away at my heart, tearing away at my mind, pulling at my spirit. I know what that's like. But you see, and I learned this. Oh my gosh, it took me forever to learn this. But I learned it finally, is that forgiveness is the answer. And forgiveness has been misrepresented for forever just misrepresented it as as this thing where you say okay i'll tolerate it okay i'll let it go okay i'll pretend that it's okay that's not forgiveness forgiveness is this forgiveness is acceptance forgiveness is saying if i could go back and change that i would not because it is a part of reality and it is a part of God and it is a building block in my life. A building block in my life. On my 15th birthday, I accidentally shot and killed my best friend who was also my blood brother and my cousin. We grew up together, we were brothers. For the next 25, 30 years, that was like 
that was like a sack of rocks, but not hanging on my back, hanging in my heart. I didn't feel like my life was worthwhile. I didn't think that I was worthwhile. I didn't feel like I had really a right to live when Gary was in his grave. I can tell you clearly and honestly, if I could go back and change that day, I would not. Because it's real. It's to try to change it is fantasy. It's real. And because it's real, it had a purpose. You see, when anything happens, like if there's a very expensive, mean vase sitting on a table and you bump it with your elbow and it falls and breaks into a million pieces and it's irreplaceable, that's the moment it felt it had purpose. The purpose began at that moment. Things came from that. And if we're in resistance, if we're not in acceptance, if we're not forgiving and if we're not believing and understanding, then the purpose gets lost. And instead, we allow the vermin in that garden to just chew at us. And why does it chew at us? Because that's God trying to say, wake up. Wake up. This is reality. You are filled with my grace. You are here on a mission. You are here with the purpose. It's not okay for you to be clambering back into the, into the garden and saying, oh, darn it, oh, darn it, oh, if only this hadn't happened. And, oh, if that's, you are the powerful creator of reality that this world needs today. And you must bring forward all of who you are and all of that, that, that affects you so strongly and let it be a part of the reality. A miraculous life is, is one that's filled with gratitude. We can, we're miracle workers, but we can't work miracles unless we're grateful, unless we're appreciative. Because that's the pathway of grace. And grace is the power and the breath of God. So unless I'm appreciative and grateful, I'm helpless. And that grace and that power is flowing into you right now. Right now. And the only obstacle, the only thing that's holding it up, the only thing that could possibly be stopping it is your own attitudes about your past. See, the old the vermin that are chewing away in your garden, those are your attitudes. On the day that you bless it, on the day that you say to every single thing that happened, I wouldn't change it if I would, if I could. I would not change it if I could. On the day that you say that, that's the day that that tree begins to bear fruit. That's the day that that vine begins to put on new berries or tomatoes. That's the day that your life becomes full and rich. We didn't come here to have an easy life. We didn't come here to sit in the bleachers and watch the game. We came here to be down on the field, making mistakes, getting our butts kicked, getting our hearts broken, and getting back up, getting knocked down twice and getting up five times, and going on because we have within us the power to win this game called life. And right now, when we look around the world at the stuff that's going on, the craziness, some of the crazy leaders that are not leading, some of the awful stuff that's happening with, with the violence and with the, with the virus and all of that stuff going on, that's a lack of leadership in us as well as those in government. Because we're not doing our part. We need to step up. And step up doesn't mean working harder. It doesn't mean, oh, go out and carry a sign. It doesn't. It means become all that you were meant to be. And that means to forgive all those things that you've been holding back on. Accept them as a part of you and a part of your life. Now, 
when I think back about Gary, and I, and I think back about Gary quite often, I don't say, oh, that's all right, that's cool, that's all right, I don't care. I still care. It still hurts. And that pain is grace. That pain pushes me forward and helps me do things. Do you know that I'm a high school dropout? I eventually was awarded a, a, a diploma, but I am a high school dropout. And I worked every kind of job, dish, washing dishes, scrubbing toilets, a dollar a day to begin with, eventually up to a dollar an hour, then, a, oh my gosh, a dollar and a quarter. I remember when I got that raise, I was so excited. And, and all of those things that have happened to me in my life, I would not be here right now. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here speaking to you. I wouldn't have the following I have around the world. I wouldn't have been able to touch the lives that I've touched had I not been able to do that. Had I not been able to forgive. So those things that are so painful, imagine for a moment that you and I are gonna go on a hike and, we're, and it's a beautiful day and we're gonna hike along a lake and up a little hill and there's a little meadow and we're going to put out a blanket and have a picnic and it's just going to be a beautiful day. Partway along, I get a rock in my shoe. It's not a big rock, it's just a little tiny rock, but it's in my left shoe and it's right by my heel. And every time I step, I can feel that rock. The beauty of the day is gone. I, I'm not seeing the beauty of the day anymore. I'm just feeling that rock. Now, of all the eternity around me and the gorgeous trees and the meadows and the birds and the lake below and the sky with its soft clouds, all of that around me, are all, they're all gone. The only thing I feel is the rock. That tiny rock's got my attention. That's what's going on in your past when you still hold back, when you have some resentment or some, some, some darkness or, or some guilt or some shame. That's a rock in your shoe. It's in the rock in the shoe of your soul. And it will not let you be who you came here to be. So it's easy. Just take off your shoe and shake the rock out. Just accept. Accept totally. As an oyster accepts the grain of sand in its shell and turns it into a pearl. We can turn our lives into a string of pearls from those things that have hurt us in the past. So here's the idea is that we must stay coherent. And coherent means that our heart and our brains are flowing and our souls are flowing. And we're flowing with the precious spirit of God, the pure spirit of creation. We are allowing ourselves in all humility to become magnificent, to become the incarnations of Holy Spirit. And in order to do that, we must forgive. We must accept. And I've given, I, I, I said that I, that I had three things that we could do, because I don't want to leave you without giving you some ammunition. Three things that we can do um, is to accept, which means forgive. To go back into the garden and accept. I can tell you something about those weeds. Once you bless them and say, I love you exactly the way you are, they turn into fruit trees. They are no longer weeds. To recognize the benefit that comes to you from the pain that you've had, from the losses. If we are here as spiritual incarnations to grow in wisdom and joy. There's no other purpose of being here, to grow in wisdom and joy. And when we go back to the mothership, we carry that additional wisdom and joy back and we, and we bring that into that great garden. That's what we're here to do, to grow in wisdom and joy. And we cannot do that unless we recognize the benefit of those things that we've resisted. And then to integrate those into the garden, to begin to integrate those things that we've resisted into our lives, to accept them and to make them a part of our lives, to accept them and bring them into our lives. Your homework this week is to get a vision 
and take a step toward it. Your desires are the Holy Spirit's calling you forward to experience bliss. It's time now for you to move. It's time for you. To, here's a magic wand I have. Here it is right here, a magic wand. I'm going to wave it around over your head and you can have one wish. Now, don't make it a little wish. Don't say, well, I'd like to wish for X, Y, Z, but that's impossible. I don't care if it's impossible. I don't care how big it is. One wish. Just take that one wish. Just make that one wish. And then this week, just make one step toward its fulfillment. Um, don't worry about fulfilling the wish. I'm not interested in that. Just one step toward its fulfillment. And here's what will happen. And I'm going to leave you with this. If you had that wish come true, whatever it is, the wish wouldn't really make any, the goal wouldn't really make any difference. What would make a difference is the feeling that it would bring you. If you had that come true, how would you feel? And that's the goal. That's the vision. So when you have that wish, when you have that goal, and you take a tiny step toward it, let yourself be flooded with the feeling of having that wish come true. Even though it may not, you may not follow this all the way to the end, let that much of it at least come true. And at the end of the week, see if your life hasn't just stepped up to the next rung. And if it has, if it has, then dare to take the next step. I'm with you wherever you are. I'm so honored, so honored to be here today with you. Thank you for being with me. I love you. Thank you, Bob, and we love you too. That was uh, a, a beautiful uh, exploration of acceptance I have to say that it uh, it brought back memories of things in my life, uh, just as it uh, has, uh, I'm sure, for many of uh, the people tuning in this morning. Um, wow, That's a, those are some some deep stories, um, and a beautiful, just a beautiful, beautiful example of how you were able to use uh, these principles, these spiritual principles, to overcome what for many people would be devastating, devastating uh, events in, in one's life. And one line that really stuck out for me was that these are like the, uh, the, the oyster and, and the, the, those irritants and the line, turn your challenges into a string of pearls. Turn your challenges into a string of pearls. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, okay, well, thank you so much, Bob, for, for being here and uh, delivering this beautiful, beautiful lesson. And I want to now uh, just sort of segue, if we can, into our offering uh, phase of the morning. And we at Unity uh, believe that all dimensions of life are holy, and uh, that does not omit uh, the aspect of prosperity and uh, abundance. And so uh, I just want everybody to join with me in sharing and holding these truths. Number one, God is our only source. God is the source of all, as was so beautifully uh, exemplified in Bob's talk. Charles Fillmore said that we should deny lack has any place or reality in our thoughts or our affairs and affirm that plenty is the only true reality. Praise what we have and insist that it is constantly growing larger. Praise what we have and insist that it's constantly growing larger. I ask everybody online today to just ponder that for a moment. Deny that lack has any place or reality in your life and affirm 
plenty. Praise what you have and insist that it is constantly growing larger. And let's now all together um, repeat after me these three affirmations. The spiritual ethers are filled with plenty. All together now, the spiritual, spiritual ethers, ethers are, are filled, filled with plenty. plenty. Prosperity fills the air. All together, prosperity, prosperity fills, fills the, the air. air. And number three, I have abundance for every need. All together, I have abundance for every need. And so now we ask that you contemplate your offering that will be made to unity this day and uh, holding it in your mind and heart. All together, we will say our offering blessing. All together now, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And we do thank you and so much appreciate uh, your contributions to our work, uh, particularly in this uh, COVID period where we're all having to meet online. It is so helpful to our, our efforts. And uh, uh, we want to draw your attention to the ways in which you can quickly draw your attention to the ways in which you can donate. Number one, uh, we can, uh, uh, you can uh, donate using Tithely. This is an app. If you just go uh, to Google and search Tithely, uh, you'll be able to either download an app on your phone or just use the app in your browser. And uh, this allows you to uh, set up your donations quickly and easily. Uh, once you do have it set up on your phone, you can donate in just a matter of a couple of seconds. As well, um, you can use PayPal. And uh, for those of you that have PayPal accounts or feel more uh, comfortable in just going to, to that, uh, if you go to unityofvancouver.org uh, on, on the homepage, you'll see a screen that looks just like that little donate green square at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. You just click that and you can use credit card to uh, make your donation quickly and easily there. And of course, you can always still use the uh, a, a good old fashioned check um, and uh, just simply mail it to uh, Unity of Vancouver uh, at the address shown on your screen or you can easily get the address uh, off of our website. So thank you so much for helping uh, make possible what we do here every week and know that everything we've done uh, that we do is completely supported by your freely given love offerings. There is no head office anywhere that uh, pays for uh, our operations to keep running. So it's, it's all thanks to you, and uh, I, I can't thank you enough. And so with that said, let's turn back to Nathan uh, for a closing song, uh, really a prayer uh, set to music. Over to you, Nathan. Thanks, Randy. This is a song by my good friend Karen Drucker, God is my source. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. And we'll change the word God to love, to joy, to peace. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. Love. Love is my source. Love is my power, love gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings, love gives me everything I need. Joy, joy is my source, joy is my power, joy gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings, joy gives me everything I need. Peace is my source, peace is my power, peace gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings, peace gives me everything I need. God, God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings, God gives me everything. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. Thank you.
Thank you, Nathan. That was awesome. And uh, indeed, God does give us everything we need. Um, we'd like to now just draw your attention to the fact that we have uh, the ability for everybody online, anybody who would like to, to pray with our chaplains after the service. Uh, in order to do that, uh, well, let me begin by just saying that our prayer chaplains today are um, Margaret McLeod, Shirley Thompson, and Luciana Velve. Uh, all, all three of uh, the chaplains, all of our chaplains, have been specially trained to pray with you in confidence and hold space and uh, uh, help you to generate uh, the intention that goes out with maximum energy uh, to bring about that which you would like to have manifest in your life. And um, uh, how do you connect to the prayer chaplains? Very simple and straightforward. Um, you can either return back to the email that you clicked on to get uh, here this morning. There's also a button in that email that will take you into the prayer rooms, uh, or you can uh, go to uh, uh, zoom.us and enter the meeting ID that's shown on the screen. That meeting ID, by the way, is also in your email. And uh, so uh, uh, we invite you to join the chaplains after the service if uh, that is uh, something you'd like to do. And um, let's see, what else we got here? Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so with that said, uh, let's see, what am I forgetting? I know I'm forgetting things here. Um, I guess my paper's in the wrong order, but I'm going to wing this uh, off the top of my head. Uh, as we come to the conclusion of the service, um, there are a number of things that we're going to just tick off as we, as we finish. Number one, um, we are going to just give you, uh, uh, make everybody aware that after the service, we will have breakout rooms where we can, um, uh, <laughs> people keep texting me while we're, uh, <laughs> while we're talking, but we're going to have breakouts. And um, uh, the breakouts are an opportunity to get into small groups, usually four or five people, uh, that contemplate a question. And our question for today will be, has there ever been anything in your life that at the time seemed to be um, really incomprehensible, um, not something you would have uh, chosen uh, and caused you great pain in the moment, but later now looking back, you can see was actually a blessing. Have you ever had something that caused pain pain and actually turned out to be a blessing. And so um, that will be the question we'll ask you to take into the breakout rooms. Um, uh, in order to enter into the breakout, breakout rooms, you just stay on uh, in the service after we finish the peace song, and uh, then you'll be automatically put into those rooms. And it's a great way to meet people that attend the center, maybe that you would have otherwise not had the opportunity uh, to get to know. And uh, as well, there's some, some deep connection and also deep insights that we'll get from our brothers and sisters uh, who maybe perhaps have seen or heard Bob's talk in a different way and are able to deepen what we're able to carry away and into our week from uh, our meeting here this morning. And so with that said, I'd now like to move forward into our prayer for protection. And if you would, uh, at home, say together with me, uh, no, we're going to prayer for protection. There we go. Um, say, let's all say this prayer for protection together. So all together now, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And, uh, just one last announcement that uh, has been drawn to my attention uh, on this day. Uh, many of you are familiar with our volunteer, Jan Roscovich, who has been a longtime volunteer uh, and recently um, a paid staff member doing uh, some of our graphics. Jan will be moving on to uh, other uh, endeavors uh, as she goes forward in her life and we wish her all of the best in her future endeavors and great happiness in her future. So if you would hold that just for a moment, let us send her a collective unity blessing of love. And so now with that, let us move on uh, as Nathan takes us through uh, the uh, traditional unity closing, uh, uh, a deep wish for world peace. Over to you, Nathan. Thank you, Mandy. 
Try that again. Joyous vow to take. 